May your Mondays be magical, may your Tuesdays be terrific, may your Wednesdays be very well and every day be amazing. <laughs> How do you feel when you say you're going to do something and you do it? How does it make you feel? So you set the goal, you made the plan, you were disciplined and you achieved your goal. How do you feel? Versus you decided you're going to do something and somebody stopped you or you stopped yourself. So it was you were undisciplined or you were lazy or you couldn't be bothered or somebody said you can't do it and you believed them and you didn't achieve your goal, how do you feel? So whether it's a small thing at the start of the day where you promise yourself I'm gonna exercise or I'm gonna study or I'm going to do something towards growing my business, you get to the end of the day and you didn't do it, how does that make you feel? Versus you start the day with, I'm going to exercise today, I'm going to eat healthy food, I'm going to study, I'm going to learn, I'm going to grow my business, I'm going to do all the things that I promised myself I'm going to do. And at the end of the day, you can look back over the day and say, hey, I did what I said I was going to do. How does it make you feel? And the reason I'm asking is we live in a world right now, I think you might have noticed, where there are a lot of people who are unhappy, anxious, miserable, depressed, a whole heap of mental health challenges. And as an exercise professional, I'm sure as a parent, a teacher, a coach, I certainly as a leader and an, and an educator, I'm constantly wanting to find solutions for major challenges. And for me, mental health, being unhappy is a major challenge. I want our kids to grow up in a world where they know that they can achieve all the things that they want to achieve and that they can live a life that they are excited about and that they can be happy. Uh, and is the opposite to being happy, is it depressed? Uh, can you be depressed and happy at the same time? Probably not. So what do we need to do to live the example for our kids so that they know that they can literally grow up, achieve the things that they want to achieve and have a great life? And I always ask this question, how would our kids know that any of that's possible if they don't have living, breathing examples of it in adults? So if you're an adult and you are not healthy, fit and strong and you don't have a career or business that you love and you're not financially free and you don't have great relationships with yourself or the other people in your life, uh, how would any child looking at your life know that it was possible to have any of those things happening? And I'm not asking you that question, I'm asking myself that question because I ask it every day and I don't even have any children. But for me, I want to be the living, breathing example of, yes, you can be healthy, fit and strong. You don't have to be sick or diseased or weak or frail or get old fast or you don't have to be overweight. You don't have to be depressed. You can literally be a healthy, fit, strong human being mentally and physically. And I want to be the living example of that. How about you? I want to be the living, breathing example of having a career and business that I love. I don't want... I can't imagine what it would be like. I've never had a lousy, stinking, rotten job and I've never worked for somebody else and I've never had to wake up going to do something that I don't like. I can't imagine how awful that would be and maybe that's the reason why there's so many unhappy, miserable, depressed people in the world because they're doing something that they don't love. If you add on top of that that you're not earning enough money doing that, so some people will, will share with me, look, I've got this horrible job but I earn a lot of money. So that could be one of those reasons why you stay there. It's like the jail bar it gets thicker and thicker the more money they pay you. Even though you hate your job and you feel like you're in jail, yuck. But because they pay you so much money, you stay there. The reverse of that is really ununderstandable if there's such a word. Why would you stay somewhere <laughs> where you're not earning enough money, you're not financially free and you hate your job? I think that's a really important question to ask. I certainly don't have an answer for that. It doesn't make any sense to me. And then why would you have horrible people in your life? Uh, wouldn't it be better to be by yourself and love who you are and respect yourself than to have lousy, miserable, grumpy, negative, uh, disloyal, uh, criticising, gossiping people in your life? I just can't understand that concept either. But how do we get to the point where we really love who we are, what we do, and we want to go and do all the things that we do, believing that we can? Well, there's a couple of things to consider, perhaps. If you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, is it possible that you get into the habit of being a starter and then a stopper or a starter and a giver opera versus if you say to yourself, I'm going to do this and you do it regardless, could you get into the habit of being a starter and a finisher, the habit of? And I think that the, the, the word habit's really important here because when you're stuck in a habit, it's very difficult to get out of it. 
Now, usually we talk about bad habits, but what about good habits? What if you were stuck in the good habit of exercising every day? What if you had the habit of eating healthy food every time you sit down to eat food or stand up because I hate sitting down? Uh, what, would you, what would your life be like if you're in the habit of being disciplined, uh, making your bed, having a clean house, uh, doing all the things that you say you're going to do? dressing beautifully, looking after your car, uh, all the little things that might add up to big things. If you say, I'm going to do this and you actually do it, could you get in the habit of being a starter, a doer and an achiever? And I would love that for our kids. And again, I ask the question, how would our children know that it's possible to be a starter and a doer if they don't have the example of that? If the people in their life are constantly starting and stopping and giving up, and I always ask the question, why do people give up? Why would you give up on a career or business that you love? Why would you give up on being healthy, fit and strong? Why would you give up on being financially free? Why would you give up on having great people in your life? Surely they're things that once you start them, you wouldn't stop. And I ask that question with such passion and enthusiasm because they are literally, those four things have been a driving force in my life since I was a very little girl. I wanted to be healthy, fit and strong because I knew what it was like to be overweight and be picked on and bullied because I was a fat girl. I wanted to have a career or business that I loved because I could see the other people in my life. I could see at 13 years of age that there were people who had lousy, stinking, rotten jobs and they hated it and I couldn't understand why you'd live your life like that. I had people in my life at 13 years of age who were always arguing about money and fighting about money and and distressed about money and and the reason their relationship wasn't working well is because they're always fighting about money and I didn't want I didn't want that for my life and I certainly didn't want to have relationships that were disrespectful because I could see that I had lots of people in my life who disrespected each other and I didn't want to live my life like that so my driving force my habit, my discipline, my start and never stop has been I'm going to make sure that every day of my life I'm working towards, I'm focusing on, I'm disciplined for being healthy, fit and strong, having a career or business that I love, being financially free and having great relationships. Uh, that's just my driving force. My question is, why would you give up on any of those? If you're going to start that stuff, why would you stop? Because the reverse of that, if you look at the ugly part, is being weak and sick and frail and diseased and depressed, having a lousy, stinking, rotten job that doesn't pay you enough money and being broken, scrounging for money all the time and having horrible people in your life. And I just can't understand why you'd want that for your life or for anybody else in your life. So I'm talking out loud here. I'm not, this is not a question even, maybe it's going to stimulate some thought patterns in your brain. I'm just asking the question because the world's in a pretty interesting place. I don't like to use negative words, but when you've got pharmaceutical use, antidepressant pharmaceutical use at an all-time high, when you've got drugs for coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, depression, uh, stroke, cancer, all the big killers that are preventable and curable, most of those, and, and in fact, I'll use cancer as an example. The oncologist that I talk to, and I have some in my circle of influence and very influential oncologists, cancer doctors, who very openly share with me that at least 80% of cancer is completely preventable if you look after your body. And that's, my, again, one of my favourite quotes. If you look after your body, your body will look after you. If you keep your body healthy, fit and strong and mentally tough, then when it is attacked by something that attacks your immune system like cancer or a virus or a bug or a germ or even a, a terrible thing that happens in the world, so you get stressed, your body will look after you if you look after your body. Your body's designed to survive and it's not only designed to survive, it's designed to thrive. So we can be healthy, fit and strong. It's a choice. Why would you give up on that and choose to be weak and overweight and unhappy and miserable and depressed? I don't know. We get to choose our career path or our business. Uh, why would you give up on that? Yes, there's going to be challenges. That's what most people do though, isn't it? They give up because there's a challenge or they give up because it gets hard or they give up because it's hot or cold or they give up because I, I don't know. Why would you give up on such important things? So I always ask this question, would it be a good idea if you've got important things in your life, things that you really want to do, that you start, you're disciplined, you do, you achieve, set another goal and start again. And I think that's a really important add-on to that. 
all of these successful people that I know, and I always put success into that category, people who are healthy, fit and strong, have a career or business that they love, they're financially free and they've got great people in their life. The people that I know like that, they don't have an ending point. There's no, well, I'm successful now so I can stop or I'm the best now so I can stop. And I had this, this beautiful quote, uh, I think it might become my new favourite quote, that success is, an, is a lifetime adventure it doesn't have an estimated time of arrival. I'll say that again. It's a lifetime adventure. Success is about having a lifetime of adventure, not arriving, oh, I'm successful now, or I'm fit now, or I've got a great job now, or I'm rich now, or I've got great people in my life now. Everybody that I've met that have all of those things going, they don't just go, well, I'm here now. I've arrived. It's all about getting better. So yes, I'm fit, but how can I get fitter? Yes, I'm strong, but how can I get stronger? Yes, I have a career or business that I love, but I want to get better at it. Yes, I have uh, financial freedom, but how can I create more financial freedom so I can do more things with my money? And that's the thing about wealth. A lot of people think, well, I've got money in the bank. Useless. Money in the bank is usually useless. It's the freedom and choice that money gives you so that you can go and do the things that you want to do support the causes, support the charities, make the world a better place because you've created wealth. And I think that's a really special thing to consider. What will I do with my money? Maybe that's a good thing to focus on. Not how do I make money, but what will I do with my wealth when I've got it? What, what difference can I make in the world? And then the beautiful people that you want to put into your life, and usually I always start with this, Aren't you the most beautiful person? Shouldn't you love who you are, respect who you are, love hanging out with you, want to be best friends with you, love the person that you are? First of all, wouldn't that be good fun because you've got somebody to hang out with that you really like all the time? You've got a best friend all the time because you really like who you are. Uh, if there's nobody else, that's okay because you'll never be lonely because you'll lo love you. But is it possible that you'll attract uh, the same kind of person into your life. And I always use this example as I stand here in my husband's office. He's a world champion. He's just won, again, uh, a gold and two silvers in a world uh, martial art championship. He's always achieving. Uh, I, how do I attract a person into my life who's an achiever if I'm lazy and undisciplined and have no achievements in my life? I, that wouldn't work, I don't imagine. He's really intelligent and constantly learning. Uh, why would somebody like that want to invest time with somebody that's lazy and undisciplined and doesn't care about growing their mind? We together are constantly learning and educating and re-educating and learning more and investing time with oncologists and psychologists and cardiologists and endocrinologists so that we're constantly getting the newest and latest information on how the human body works and all the new things that people that people are learning about the human body so that we can get better and better at what we do mentally and physically. How would I attract a person into my life who's a, who's a bit who's a learner if I wasn't a learner? I think it's a really important question. Uh, how would I attract somebody into my life who's healthy, fit and strong if I wasn't? Why would that person want to invest time with me? Somebody who's, uh, I often hear this, people say to me, oh, look, I want to find somebody who's wealthy. Well, there's a reason that people are wealthy. Would that be fair? So how can I attract a wealthy person into my life if I'm lazy with my money or I disrespect my money? And that's one of the things I was taught as a little girl. Rowie, if you don't look after your money, it's disrespectful to your money. And I, for a very long time, was very disrespectful to my money. I earned a lot of money, but I didn't look after it. And I learned the hard way that if you don't look after your money, it won't look after you because it won't be there. <laughs> so how do you attract people into your life who have respect for money if you don't have any respect for money? And then that all-important question, why would people respect me if I don't respect myself? Why would somebody come into my life and treat me beautifully if I don't treat myself beautifully. So I'm asking all of these questions because I want our kids to have a great world to live in. I want to be a starter and a finisher, not a starter and a stopper. I want to be a person who sets goals and achieves them, not sets goals and gives up as soon as the first challenge comes along. How about you? So if you want your life to be happy, healthy, fit, strong, rewarding, and wake up every day loving your life, what do you have to do every day to make sure that that happens? And could it be that you've got to focus on some of the little things or all of the little things? If you, if you focus on the big and the little, or if you focus on the little, could they become the big? So if you always make your bed, if you always look after your fingernails, if you always brush your teeth, if you always 
keep your house clean, if your car is always clean, the little things that force your brain to think organised, disciplined. Is it possible that if you are disciplined in one area of your life that it could help in the other areas of your life? We can't expect to have a healthy, fit, strong body if we don't get puffed and we don't lift heavy. Health and fitness doesn't fall out of the sky in a pretty pink box. So a great life doesn't fall out of the sky in a pretty pink box. Is it possible that we have to create it? We have to be disciplined. So we start, we're disciplined, we focus, we're committed, we do, and then we achieve. And then we set another goal and achieve again. So rather than talking about what you're going to do and the things that you've got to do or I have to do this or everybody expects this of me, how about this? How about live your life every day focused on the things that are important to you? If you say you're going to do it, not to everybody else, if you say you're going to do it, just do it. Uh, and I know that that's a very common phrase and people use it all the time. But here's a great question. Everything you've ever said that you were going to do, what if you had done it? Think about over your lifetime, and this is embarrassing for me because I've said a lot of things, but imagine if everything that we had said we were going to do, we actually did it. Would we now be in the extreme habit, if there's such an expression, that we can't not do it because we're in the habit of doing everything we said we're going to do? So if you say you're going to get up and exercise, could it be a good idea just to get up and do it? If you say you're going to eat healthy food, could it be a good idea to do it? If you say you're going to study, learn, educate, could it be a good idea to do it? Could it be a really good idea to get into the habit of being disciplined so that you can achieve all the things that you want to do? Could that be a good idea? Woohoo! And then you too could sing. May your Mondays be magical, and they will be. May your Tuesdays be terrific, and they will be. May your Wednesdays be very wow, and they will be. And every day will be amazing because you choose them to be. Romax, live life to the max. My name's Rowie, and I would love for you to live life to your max. Woohoo! I feel good. Na 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 na. I knew that I would now. Na 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 na. So 